Hello guys, uh, welcome to our uh, Python internals tutorial series. Uh, my name is Shako, I'm Azerbaijan Python user group leader. And uh, on behalf of our user community, I'm going to <coughs> record video series about Python internals, but doing some silly things. We are going to add uh, useless features to the Python source code and explore it uh, internally. Uh, but first of all, you need to grab uh, your very own Python source code. Uh, Particularly the C Python, which is a, um, a default Python interpreter. So they have this nice Python developer's guide. You should follow it, fork the C Python repository on your GitHub account, and uh, it will show up like your username, uh, the GitHub username, and the name of the forked uh, repo. Then you should clone it, put uh, the username here, and go ahead to the, the Python, uh, CPython folder where you have cloned it. Uh, run the configure with PyDebug, it will enable, uh, uh, I would say, debug symbols, uh, which is crucial uh, <coughs> while mm, doing some development uh, on uh, a Python uh, project, CPython project. And then run, run the make command, it will compile the binary version of your very own uh, Python. As you see, I am in uh, my folder, CPython. I have already uh, done these steps, and now I have my copy of uh, the Python, which is the latest one, 3.9. Uh, and that's it. So, <coughs> the simple steps, you will have your own uh, Python uh, interpreter located uh, inside the, the C Python folder. Uh, and in this video, so it's, it's rather short, in this, in this video we are going to explore the integer type or the typing, uh, how they uh, uh, wrote the integer type internally in Python. And to, to, in order to start, like k equal 5, it has type. So this is a integer type, but it has also the type if you wrap up. So this is uh, the type of the integer is a type type. <laughs> this kind of thing. And uh, if you even wrap up, uh, nothing changed. So there's a something uh, self-referenced. Uh, internal. So let's explore what's in it. Uh, if you fire up the VS Code, <coughs> and this is the uh, in, inside the CPython uh, the folder. I'm using VS Code. You can use whenever you want. So I'm not going to explain uh, what each this folder, uh, the meaning of this of these folders. Uh, we will learn on the way. But in general, the types, the objects, are stored in the objects folder. So they have the bool object, which is a boolean type. Uh, they have definitely maybe dict object, which is implementation of the dictionary in Python. Float object, implementation of the float. But there's no <coughs> int, uh, int object. This is a long object, see. So, the long object, see, they have uh, such implementation. So all uh, integer is a pylon type. So it has uh, the pi var object head in it, which is stored is object age, which is required a type object. And this is a pi type type. So if you remember, there's a type, 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 there's a pi type, type, which is as the self-reference inside it. And uh, the name of the type, the TP name that located here, which we saw here. So, and the name of the type is int because its TP name is int. So, some kind of unique features of uh, the integer type uh, in Python. It's not the iterable 
So as you see, there's a TP eater equal zero. That means that you can't, uh, you can't, for example, run the four in K, for example. So int object is not iterable. And in the future, we will explore uh, inter uh, deeply uh, why it's not iterable. So, but the sum of the features of the integer type that it's that zero, then they have not implemented the iter next, the iter. I don't know if uh, tp dict. There's everything is um, a zero here, but it has long as number. So tp as number, it's kind of uh, what this number can do. So. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you want to add some number, this is nb add <coughs> action, which is uh, called the long add. So subtraction, multiplication, mod division, <coughs> and XOR or everything else like is stored as uh, long as number, and it has a reference to TP as number. That's uh, as a integer type internally created actually and this is our first video so I'm not going to uh, to make it long but keep keep in the mind that there's a pylon type which is a, a creating uh, which is a um, creating a <coughs> integer type from the C type we can see it uh, we can see it let me just the my notes we can see it from line line uh, okay let me just grab grab this two 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 and so there's a pile of new object and uh, allocate a new int object with size of digits, number of bytes needed, and the pylon copy. No, there's a create uh, pylon from one. So this is the case. So create a new int object from a C long int. So our integer int type is a subtype of the C long integer. So this is how they implemented uh, our, <coughs> our integer type. But all the features are in pi pi long type pi long type. All the features of the integer type are stored here. So this is a pi type object. So everything is an object. And everything, uh, every single object has a type on it. It has also the <coughs> reference to the garbage collector, uh, the point mm, uh, in order to decrement and uh, the riff count actually to the garbage collector, decrement and increment the riff count. But we will explore it uh, in the future videos. So this is the and the and the next in the next video we are going to. Uh, uh, use these C types here, the C code, in order to add two integers. That's all for now, but uh, see you in the next video. So, bye. Um, as we have mentioned in the previous video, we are going to add two integers by using Python C API. But uh, before I've, <coughs> I have to mention, like I forgot uh, to conclude our installation steps. Uh, there's a single command called sudo make alt install. So not install, sudo make install, but uh, sudo make alt install. It will install Python, our custom Python uh, globally, but without interfering the default uh, system-wise uh, Python interpreter. So. This is for easiness, uh, to, to ease our life. 
and uh, as you see we have two different um, uh, Python interpreter and this is one is going to be used right now in order let, let me just clear the screen <laughs> so in order to uh, to explore the internals of the, the C, uh, C API we are going to attach our um, Python interpreter to debugger and let's see uh, we need to break at the main function so what's the main function let me just uh, explore it for you so there's a Python C file in the programs and it has this uh, the main function so we need to break at at this point because uh, otherwise it will initialize all the environment and uh, uh, and it will uh, prompt the interpreter so let me just show it to you uh, if we run like this it's going to uh, come up with the, this prompt but this is not a desired behavior behavior that's why we need to uh, break at main and then run uh, that's it so if you recall uh, in order to create a new integer type we need to use pylong from long uh, long function and this is uh, is here so create a new int object from a c long int let's come back to the debugger screen and clean a bit so we should call it like and this is our integer <coughs> There's an object, it, as you see, it's it, it's type uh, the pi object. So I remember we say that everything is a, a object in the Python, and that's that's the case actually. So let's just explore a bit uh, what's going on here. And so. And where is it? Long. So we need to find like pi long new. <laughs> Let me just pi long new. Yeah. Uh, so this is going to allocate a new int object with size digits, return null, and set exception if we run out of the memory. <clears throat> so this is a, uh, as I commented the source code this will create a new int object and uh, which is uh, uh, allocating memory for a given int here pylong with, uh, with the usage of the pylong new and let's create another uh, integer and explore a bit uh, the type things so um, if you see uh, this type object as object reference count object type so object type is a pylon type which is a pi type type uh, if we recall uh, from the previous <coughs> video excuse me and if we just uh, just print this and as you see that there's an ob base and inside this ob base there's an ob type object type which is pi type type so as we clarified and it has tp name as we clarified and uh, let me just show again pi long type pi long type and so there's a tp name uh, TPS number, TPS sequence, and etc., uh, which is shown in our uh, debugger as well. <coughs> and let's explore the pylon type itself. The same thing. So, because our created pylon from long is a pylon type. And everything is inherited from this pylon type to the uh, to the our uh, integer integer type, I would say. And it has TPS number. 
So in order to get the idea uh, how to uh, sum up the uh, sum up the two integers internally, uh, we are going to find which function is going to do uh, this for us. And it has, uh, as you see, it has n b add, so it's <laughs> number add. It will call the long add of the function. And let's just um, see what's what's this. So it's uh, the m b add is going to uh, accept two pi object type. So everything is pi object, and uh, as we say, uh, so if Every integer is also the pi object, so everything in Python uh, can be actually cast casted to pi object. It's actually said in uh, in here, but I I don't know if I can find it right now. Nevertheless, we will figure out. <coughs> so mb at uh, and we have, as you see, it's required uh, the pointer, so we can uh, pass to the nb add these uh, memory addresses, and will it will uh, add them, add the number for us. So let's just call it. Uh, call pi long pi long type tp as a number and be add and then just pass our first integers memory address and then our second integers uh, memory address so it's returned another pi object and if you uh, explore the type is, is, is also the pylon type so it's added to pylon type and returned uh, this summed uh, number it's also the pylon type and we need now so how to prove that we have added uh, two integers successfully here and we need to call uh, pi object print function so it's going to pr uh, print at the past object and if we uh, do print print and pass this returned memory address it's, it's its own signature so nothing fancy here it's it has on segmentation fault uh, the error because we uh, there's a some pi initialize function which is uh, here so let me just add it here so initialize a Python interpreter in an application of Medic Python. This should be called before using any other Python C API functions. So we need to call this pi initialize in order to use pi object print function. Then just call it uh, pi initialize. Oops. That's it. And let's print. So as you see, it's summed up successfully so we have numbers as you see and it's summed up and the, the number the result is a correct so uh, just remember that when you <coughs> just easily adding uh, two integers together uh, add the integers uh, this whole thing is happening and uh, as a background so that's uh, uh, actually adding two integers together and then the printing the everything so we have explored what's the pylon type pi type type what's the main function and when to break actually uh, when we want to attach the python for a process to the debugger and also we explored uh, how we can call uh, c api functions in order to uh, add uh, add two integers. So the same idea. We can divide module and everything uh, with this uh, Python C, C API. Uh, that's it for for now. So uh, it's a base idea that we should 
uh, start explore <coughs> the integer type and we have explored how to add uh, two integers here uh, using the Python C API and uh, if you are unfamiliar with the GDB syntax or the uh, debugger syntax we are going to use uh, it uh, extensively here that will be the valuable, valuable knowledge and information to you as well uh, see you in the next video bye Hello guys, welcome to our next Python internals um, video tutorial. Uh, so what we want to do so far is to add some silly functionality to the Python by abusing its source code, uh, I have say. And what we want to achieve for upcoming few videos, we have a list of integers with dear uh, you can get uh, the supported uh, methods and the dunder methods for this type and uh, for list they have uh, <coughs> the dunder lane it will return the lane of the, the list and of course a built-in lane method um, for getting the length of the list uh, we want the same functionality for the integer type uh, why we uh, wanted it, it it's for nothing but for, for fun uh, because uh, the integer itself has no length so uh, it's, it's useless to have some type of length of the integer but we want to return uh, and uh, return to zero for uh, down the lane and built on lane if we uh, call these functions these methods on uh, the integer type for now, of course, it will give an error. So int object has no attribute down the lane and the type error object of type int has no length. Uh, the crucial part of uh, this error is that if you remember the error type, uh, especially the string of the error, you can locate this uh, inside the CPython source code and try to uh, manipulate there in order to bypass this limitation but prior this before this actually um, we need to understand uh, the list object the list type itself so if you type um, a key it's a list list type and of course every, as everything it's a type type so there should be some pi list type as pi long type for the integer and it should be pi type type uh, and let's see this thing uh, in the source code so pi list uh, type uh, th this uh, the, the python's list object implementation uh, is located under objects and list object dot c file there is a pi list type and it has uh, uh, of course as the first thing that this pi var object with reference to the pi type type uh, the uh, tp name the list uh, size and every uh, uh, supported methods for this especially it's interesting that <coughs> the list type is an iter iterable type and it's a sequence type uh, so and the supported methods for this sequence is to getting the list length, list con concatenation, list repeat, and uh, all sort of things. So the list length itself, let's see, itself implemented like uh, returning the pi size, returning the pi size. So pi size is simple, getting the object size store all the, all the stored object size. So for list type to getting the length of the list is uh, way more easy because it's already stored in the object uh, in the object header maybe I don't know no it's it's object field uh, <coughs> that's the that's not the important part for us uh, for now but also also you can see what's there. Let me just jump back and um, 
as this list methods. So it's of list methods. Uh, it has all, uh, all, all the methods uh, which should be as TP methods. So this type methods, it has list methods, but it's also as a sequence. So as a, as a sequence method, it has also this, um, this implemented uh, sequence methods. So I just want to find the exact implementation of nope. <clears throat> okay, it, it's clear that we, if we want to add support uh, for the integer type, uh, we should definitely use such things. So it's a, it, we will have the int length, something, some sort of thing, and it will implement the. Um, it, it will implement the uh, cal calculating uh, thunder calculating length of the integer, but we will just return the zero here. So it's quite straightforward. But for now, let's just uh, create a list, create a list, and append the uh, the member, append the member to the, uh, to the list by using Python C API. So what we want to achieve here, uh, as you see, we have this list. Let me just clear. And we want, and we, if we want to append something here, like we just call the append method, append method, and it's uh, it's going to add this integer to our list. But we want uh, it the hard way. So let's attach our Python three point nine uh, interpreter to other debugger, and. Um, at the breakpoint, at the main, then run, then call pi initialize, and there should be something like pi list new method. Pi list new, yeah. So it's accepting some kind of size. If size uh, um, less than zero, it will return the null. So it, it, it cannot create the list type with uh, some negative size. So it's usual, understandable. So let's call pi list new, uh, let's say with zero. And ideally it should, uh, it should create an empty list. So Let's just by object print and get this memory. Oops, ah, S R and one. So as you see, it's empty, empty list. Great. Then there should be some append uh, or append uh, method on. Uh, on this list type. Uh, just just a few checks if we can get some info from less. Yes, it's a pi list type that created the pi list type. And also if you get this, uh, it will give the, uh, the all properties this pi list type has. Uh, quite straightforward as with long type, as with the integer type. Uh, let's search for append. Um, append pylist append yes we have such uh, the function and it accepts uh, uh, the pi object and the new item so we need to pass the first of all the address of the already created list and the new item uh, to this um, list. So we have already created uh, the new list item, so we can call this and get um, get this here. But no, but prior to this, we uh, should create say uh, um, the integer. So pi pi long or from long some kind of integer. Great, then append to already 
created list is this new created integer. Great. Then try to again print this list. So as you see, we have appended the desired uh, integer to the uh, to our uh, a list object, our list type. Let's see. Uh, that's it for now. So we have ex explored the list object uh, and the pylist new and pylist append uh, functionality here. How to create an empty list or oh, uh, one interesting thing. So if you create, <coughs> say, the past the five here with pylist new and try to try to print it so you will see that uh, the list is initialized uh, with the uh, null values as a uh, as a field members so uh, that's a it should be interesting uh, uh, I guess to everybody how to how to uh, call uh, the internal Python C API uh, functions and they it's quite actually uh, uh, self self explained. It has uh, the similar names so py um, project print, pylist app, and pylist type, and every every sort of thing that they are quite understandable. And that's it for now. Uh, uh, see you in the next video, and I hope we are going to add this len functionality uh, to. Uh, to, for calculating the length of the integers in the next video. See you! Hello guys, welcome to our next video about Python um, internals. Today we are going to add uh, Dunderland and built-in LAN uh, methods to the integer type it will simply return the zero this is the useless things but it's important to cover up uh, how actually we can add this support to unsupported object type so what we want to do uh, as you see is an empty list and every list has the dunderland method which uh, returns the length of the in, uh, fields actually uh, the count of the fields uh, inside the list but for list object it will return uh, simply the uh, object size here uh, with integer there is no such support uh, because it's useless to have the length of the integer because uh, the integer has no length but we want uh, what we want is just zero. So for now, it gave it gives us uh, the int object has no attribute dunder len. And uh, let's start uh, to implementing this feature um, and adding the dunder len support. But first of all, let's just uh, check out uh, to the different branch mm, len support int object for example yes and what we want to do here like to figure out how uh, we can add extra methods uh, to the object so for analogy I want to describe the list iterator here which uh, returns a list iterator object and creates actually this iterator object from the list type and they uh, declare such things that uh, if you want to add some kind of new function here for example list iter len uh, is going to have uh, the name then uh, the function itself and the uh, doc uh, for this function the same thing applies to uh, if you want to add mm, the thunder len support to the uh, integer object then we should do the same thing here that's why uh, I'm going to add some uh, the function uh, which returns just zero and then I'm going to add some doc uh, for this function and uh, let's see after that what's going to happen 
So creating um, now I'm going to name it as int length and it's going to accept for example mm, pi long object Oops. Sorry. we are not going to use this but it's just a signature as I have copied it from the list object implementation and it's just for example um, it's just returning a pi long you should recall it uh, from long and zero uh, that's it for the function itself and extra thing like pydoc str so we are going to name it length doc and some kind of doc for here private method uh, returning zero as len of integer quite useless yeah and we should register uh, this as this uh, the function in long methods here so what we want to do is like name it so we want to be this to be named thunderland uh, we are going to cast it to um, pi c function as they did here so this is just I'm going to copy in here the name of the function itself so int length which we have declared above then just another copy and um, yep and and length doc not length hint doc not length doc that should be enough actually then let's compile let's compile it so make easy so now just describing let me just clear up and dear uh, k also let's see the type of k so it's an integer type but for now it should have already the len so uh, so this is totally different from what we have seen here as you see for the uh, integer type there is no len but now we have we have add this support and let's just call this function to see if it works yes uh, so for every uh, the length of every integer we are going to return zero here uh, but how about the len uh, built-in function so as you see, this, there are two different things. So Thunderland is a special method here, uh, but we have also the built-in methods, uh, which is declared in built-in module C in the objects uh, <coughs> in the uh, Python folder under the C Python source code. And we should add this support also here. So I'm just going to further harass <laughs> uh, the C Python source code here. And uh, let me just uh, continue about uh, continue improving our uh, the support here. So the, let's just search for built-in len. So built-in len, right? Uh, the built-in len is 
is, is returning uh, the size of the object here. So let's just dig into. As you see, uh, where is this error about? Yes, object type int has no length. So we can add the support right above here. So if it just just check the the type of the object, and int, uh, if it's the integers, then return right away the zero. Uh, again, we are not going to show some best practices of sub, um, uh, contribution of the C Python. We are just uh, learning something new with doing something wrong. So that's that's our case. And I'm going to add like string name uh, and converting the uh, type of uh, the past object, which is here. So, which is in, in our turn will be integer. So, and getting uh, the TP name from there. So, if you recall, the TP name is the name uh, of the object. And for now, uh, for us, um, it's integer. So, and checking like if it equals int, then just simply return uh, pi long from from long. That should be enough for uh, for our code. And yeah, let's just compile it again. Oops. Mm -hmm. Clearly. And now, if we are declaring some integer and returning the len, that's it. So we have implemented two things: the uh, the returning zero from the built-in len function, as we did here, and also uh, returning zero for dunder len special method. Uh, again, we don't need <laughs> returning zero for the length of uh, the integer, but it's crucial to understand how actually we can bravely uh, edit the C Python source code and uh, copy paste some code portions, then recompile it and check if if it works. So that's it for this video. Where uh, I think in in my plan. Uh, in the next video, we are going to dig into the non-type. The non-type is the, um, the, the, the most primitive uh, the object type in, in the Python. But the, uh, it has still uh, have some features that we want to abuse here. Uh, thanks and see you in the next video. Hello guys and welcome to our next video about the Python internals. Today we are going to explore uh, the non type um, in uh, Python. It's a must uh, fundamental and uh, the simplest uh, object type in the Python source code as I know. And uh, But uh, before that, uh, let's just step back and uh, uh, try to find the unique features of the non type. And after that, we are continuing to explore the source code and uh, try to uh, edit and add some useless features to the non-type. So let's begin. So say we have the integers, two integers. Actually, it's, they are, have the same value. And if you check if uh, they have same value, the, the equal of nodes, it will return true. And also, there is a, a keyword is, which is kind of if uh, k equal to z, and uh, if they have uh, the same memory address. So they, if they are pointing the, to the same memory address or not. Uh, let me clarify a bit. If we are going some kind of assign k some a big int uh, and a log int, a long int actually, then they have, in fact, the same values, but they are not the same anymore. Uh, this is a 
internal Python memory optimization, we are going to talk uh, the, mem mm, the memory uh, allocation uh, in a different video, but here uh, I'm going to just to explore why is uh, the non is unique in term of uh, the memory addresses. Uh, and well, let's just explore, explore uh, the memory addresses here and Z. So if you see, uh, they have allocated uh, these two different integers, it is it, two uh, same integers in two different memory addresses. That's why K is not Z, but they have the same value. For small ints, uh, uh, I think there should be some kind of small int memory optimization here. And uh, due to this, the K and Z is just pointing to the uh, same uh, small integer. And that's why they are the same here. Uh, K is Z here. That's uh, actually uh, how the is keyword uh, works under the hood. But what, what's about the non type? So uh, the clear uh, source code documentation here is that in, in the non type, let's just read it. The non is a non null undefined value. So this is a uh, not null. So if uh, you say that the, the null is the non, no. Uh, so the, the source code documentation says that the non is a non-null undefined value. There is and should be no way to create other object of this type. So there is exactly one, which is undestruct undestructible by the way. So what, what what does it mean? If you create k from none and z from none, k is z true key is none is true and z is none is also true because they all have the same uh, memory addresses as you see and even the none itself so uh, that's the that's the case actually so, so none is globally unique uh, it has globally unique and undestruct indestructible uh, the memory address. Even uh, it's uh, it's impossible to deallocate a non-type itself. So this should never get called. So non-deallocation, non-dealloc func. This should never get called. But we also don't want to seg uh, seg It's a segmentation fault. Uh, the error if we accidentally decrypt none out of existence. So five fatal error deallocating none. So this is undestructible. Uh, type in term of uh, the changing the, the memory addresses. Moreover, uh, the type none type none itself is a non type, but there is no such uh, built-in uh, I'll say constant the called non type. If you want to create uh, an extra non type, you can use a type calls. So type none and this should be return uh, the non itself. So k is non, yes, but we use the type call. So we call the non type type call. There's a, a such thing that called the type call. And if you uh, check uh, the memory address of this, even uh, the type call, so type none and let's just call it as you see that they are all the same that uh, was the documentation actually clearly states there is and should be no way to create other objects of this type so it's there's only one non type uh, it's a, the whole process of the interpreter and uh, actually it's a running program and we find uh, that where we can abuse this. So uh, in the next video, I'm going to add some kind of uh, useless things that it will return, uh, I would say, the, the new memory addresses. And after after a while, after these uh, additions, there's 
impossible to check if something is none. So this this is my uh, the idea about the non type. So what we can say about the non type uh, non type is a wonderful um, blog post uh, from the real Python dot com, and they have uh, taken about uh, taken a look under the hood. So as we mentioned, this is a type non non type, and this none is uh, 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 come from the built-ins. If we remember, the built-ins uh, are in the Python built-in. Well, well, um, none. Let's just find where is the none. Yeah, that the built-in none is just returning the pi none, which uh, just returns the pi none struct here, and the pi none struct itself uh, has pi none type, the pi none type, the name as a none type, and it has nothing, only none new, and we, we will explore it. And uh, nothing fancy on the non bool, which is uh, the ensuring that when you call the bool none, it should return the false, and also if you call dunder bool, it should also return the false. Uh, there's nothing fancy here, that's it. And let's just continue with our blog post. So uh, you can you can't just choose built-ins none here as you see but what you can do is just print by getting attribute of the none oops can't copy it great and it, yes, the same thing that you can type uh, none, uh, print the my none, and my none is none, it is always uh, true. Also, the, uh, the memory addresses will be the same. Uh, you cannot assign anything to the none type. Uh, you cannot modify and you cannot uh, subclass from the, uh, the none type. None type is not acceptable, the base type. This is a unique features of the none type. Uh, but also, uh, it's actually uh, the interview question. Uh, so, why, as you see, for example, why uh, the non type takes 16 bytes the memory? So, so th th basically, the non type is a null uh, from uh, so null for, from other languages such as low level GoLang or C, C++ and null address is just uh, zero. A zero memory address, so it, it not uh, it doesn't consume any memory, but here it consumes. Get size of none. None is sixteen bytes, uh, so it's uh, it's not as uh, memory efficient, but still, none is none. Uh, so what we can do about this. So there is a wonderful talk uh, which I will put the, uh, the uh, link for the uh, uh, slide. So uh, by Vlad Sidorenko, and it uh, the, it states that uh, each the structure of the Python uh, object in the Python that each uh, as we mentioned before each, each Python object has reference count and the pointer to the type. So this thing consumes 16 bytes. Object-specific fields, the none type has no object-specific fields. But list type uh, should have, the pylon type uh, should have, the integer type should have. That's why, that's why the integer type uh, consumes more, so 28 bytes overall. So. Uh, uh, this information is crucial in terms of that uh, uh, giving the default values to, to the, uh, for example, to our functions. 
let's just uh, if you create some function with uh, k and y and you want to just put the default values like this just sync twice uh, because it consumes more memory uh, if you just do like this and then pass <coughs> the integer to the function uh, it will just use less memory so this is a basic idea but we will see what's going on on the uh, under the hood uh, wh when we explore the function objects uh, so that's it for uh, intro of the non type the features of the non um, i think uh, it's enough the next video we are going to edit the source code and uh, do some change to the non type itself so thanks for watching see you in the next video Um, hello guys, we are still exploring the non-type uh, internals uh, in the Python and let's uh, see um, how actually the new non-type object can be created and actually how they uh, have implemented uh, the non-new method uh, in order to get uh, to create a non-type object. So there's a non-new uh, the method and uh, it has some error in it that non type takes no arguments we can actually see this error by the calling type none and passing for example uh, the sum value to the type called of the non type so non type takes no arguments this is the exact error uh, stated in the source code uh, the below uh, they have this uh, the macro <laughs> Uh, pi return none let's just dig into uh, here uh, the, the, the documentation itself is wonderful so pi non struct uh, is an object of undefined type which can be used in context where null nil is not suitable since null often means error so as I understand uh, the whole let's see Python source code in uh, under some circumstances if they need some kind of undefined type they are going to uh, use pi struct uh, but don't forget to apply pi inc ref uh, the when returning this value so pi inc ref is just uh, incrementing the object reference count by one so when you create a new non-type it's going to uh, increase uh, it's a global uh, ref reference count of this type. We can see this also from uh, the, from using the uh, the sys uh, the module. It has some get ref count and the method which is uh, going uh, to return uh, the object reference count. And as help states, uh, it's uh, the built-in function. Uh, and it returns the reference count of the object. The count return is generally one higher than you might expect because it includes a temporary reference as an argument to the get ref count itself. That's why, for example, we have uh, declared z as none and it has 4061 uh, reference counts and we have created y, y as none and the uh, reference count is increased by one. So why uh, the reference count to the non-type non is so high uh, as the documentation clearly state, states that uh, there is globally only one uh, non-type uh, and uh, every time if you if, if the C Python source code itself so Python interpreter itself uh, needs some undefined value it's going to uh, generate uh, uh, this uh, non-type object internally and each time it should uh, increment the reference count so that's why it's high as i understand so and as uh, the clearly the documentation states and oops mm -hmm. where is where we have um, pi return none so it's incrementing the pi none and returning the pi none pi none itself uh, is a pi none struct so that's it uh, for the simple implementation of uh, the non-new. Uh, 
So we can create uh, the non type from uh, using the Python C API as well. So that's, let's just fire up our uh, GDB debugger. And again, we are going to add brick main, then run, then call uh, py initialize. Uh, call it. And let's see uh, what's the type name here for the non type. So it's a py non type. So we can actually get uh, get the uh, get the possible actions on this Python type. So there's nothing fancy here. Because, uh, at least um, almost actually the sorry now almost everything is undefined for non type because uh, there's no such actions we can do with a non type. And only uh, the interesting part is just this tp new. So tp new is just ref calling the non new. So we can call actually non new directly as well. Non new. Let's just see this non new, which is requires. So it requires as argument by type object, any type object. Then uh, the pi object and uh, again the pi object. So, but here in the source code, it, it, it it's just it just wants uh, the uh, star arcs and key arcs. Uh, I think we can pass uh, for arcs the empty tuple and for Q arcs the empty dictionary, and for pi type type uh, and uh, any type. Let's just create. Uh, one uh, from here. Mm, let's just uh, call pylong uh, pylong new. There's nothing. Uh, ma no, pylong from long. It should be create the integer type for us then. Uh, mm, pi. I assume pi tuple new should be yeah and pi dict dict new so this is empty tuple and this is empty dictionary and this is some kind of integer then we can pass it to our um, our non new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it as you see that uh, it has created, uh, and we have a new uh, non-type object, but we have created it using non new, which is tp new uh, for uh, pi non-type. Also, we have some uh, non del location here. Let's just call it. Maybe it will work and passing uh, the non-type memory address itself uh, call so yes signal about it uh, non dial location dial location dial located none so it it will raise the python uh, fatal python error as uh, clearly uh, described here we have also the non bool when you call this in a number, it will return zero. Let's just call bool and the memory address of zero. Yes, as clearly described here, the non representation non wrapper. Again, the, it's just ignored, but still we need to pass something. And uh, non representation is um, uh, yeah, 
it's not this, maybe we should print this and it, it will print the null so it's not important here and uh, as you see there is a none as number um, uh, uh, and it, in, inside it said uh, it, it's, it it has only the non bool uh, the non bool the method uh, you can see this method as the bool so none and none calling this thunder bool and because zero as uh, interpreted as false it clearly uh, the prints the false that's it uh, for none type so we have called none new uh, oh uh, the, the remaining thing that uh, as a proof of concept so we have create the call none new and it has this memory address uh, but how about the call again the none new uh, uh, so I want to just describe that even calling from the, uh, the Python C API, uh, it will return at the same memory address. So none will uh, have uh, only one uh, the unique memory address. Now let's just mm -hmm. call it again and again and again. That's it. Uh, it's because the file non struct itself has only uh, this uh, memory address and it's um, globally unique. So we have, uh, we have explored the non type imp implementation. It's stored in object C. It has uh, the simplest uh, ever implementation. It's returning pi return none, which in turn. Uh, returns the pynon which in turn returns the pynon struct and uh, each time we are uh, we are creating or assigning some non value to, uh, to, to a variable it's in incrementing the uh, uh, global uh, non type uh, reference count as seen here uh, it has implementation of uh, bool type only it's impossible to allocate uh, the memory address of the nun because as if, if you can do this, uh, everything will collapse. So no need to do this. <sighs> but in the next video, uh, I'm going to uh, to change the source code uh, to return some integers in non new. Uh, also. There's a non implementation in the built in in the built in mm, module uh, which is returning simple pynon. I'm going to return here as well the integers so when you uh, try the get attribute from the built in module it will return some integer value. So uh, the clearly the, the very use, useful things to do but uh, still we are brave enough to for example return one and bool none will return true so we will do this uh, in the next video i i think so that's it uh, uh, in my notes i have no uh, nothing left for uh, the explaining the type and how it's implemented actually and in the next video we are going to edit the non-type implementation so see you in the next video, bye. Hello guys, welcome uh, to our next video about Python internals. Uh, in the previous videos we have explored uh, how actually the non-type uh, type, non-type object was uh, uh, implemented in the uh, CPython, in Python source code. And um, it's our turn now to make some uh, useless change to the non-type uh, object. So I've created uh, the non-type change, uh, the branch, and what I want to do here is uh, return, for example, true for non bool call. So currently it returns false because we are returning zero here. And as you know, the zero is false and one is true. So if we return the true, return the one here, it 
it makes sense and it will return uh, true for non bool uh, the method call let's just recompile it and see if it's true or not yeah uh, now it's currently true and as, uh, as you s uh, see in uh, uh, where we have explored the internal mechanisms of the non-types it's unique feature that uh, uh, there should be only one non-type object and uh, it's undestructible uh, but what we, what we can do here while we create uh, the new non-type object with using the non-new we can return something uh, not a non-type uh, but uh, something like uh, I don't know if the big integer for example pylong from long with uh, this kind of integer and let's just recompile it let's see what's going on oops yeah c c is here um, yeah and when you call uh, this uh, uh, when you call this none and assign the uh, to the, uh, the k variable and let's just see uh, what the memory address it has and the extra one with y as you see they have uh, total different memory addresses because we are returning uh, not a non-type but uh, the integer type here and for uh, big integers the Python uh, memory allocator will allocate the separate memory addresses as you see here so this is not true for, uh, anymore because the type none itself still non-type but when you call it and check it now it's integer because we are returning here the integer so it's just kind of a silly change but uh, uh, for the sake of the braveness we can do it um, I don't know what we can ex do an extra with uh, the non-type because it's simplest type actually with no features ah, now we can do like uh, for built-in module there's a none and we can return here also uh, some integer type Oops. Mm. let's see just uh, no, 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 I'm in the wrong place. I need this terminal. And uh, so, what we want to achieve here so, if you print with get better and from built ins the none, so it's returning the none because here's a, it's a pynon. And pynon itself uh, uh, returns uh, uh, the pynon struct, which is the non type. Uh, so, what we can do just pylong uh, from long here with I don't know, extra integers, and let's just recompile it. And now, when we uh, try to get the non from the built-ins it will return this integer because we have specified it here uh, mm, it should enough uh, it should be enough for the non-type and exploring or changing making some uh, the change to the non-type itself and, and do it uh, uh, the simplicity of this type uh, there's not too many there's not too many things to uh, Structure to change, and uh, I think that's enough for the non-type. And in the next video, I want to explore the boolean type in, in the next built-in type, uh, the primitive type uh, of the boolean. Uh, uh, boolean, and uh, let's see what features uh, ha it has. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye. Hello guys, welcome to our next video about Python internals. We are exploring today uh, the boolean type uh, or the bool object uh, and how it's implemented in the CPython. 
uh, as you figure out uh, the bool object is implemented at, in the bool object.c file and it's located in, in the objects uh, the folder it's quite straightforward and uh, it has actually a neat documentation the inline documentation in the source code so boolean, boolean type uh, is a subtype of int great and <laughs> it's clearly stated uh, then there is a Another comment, uh, we define bool wrapper to return false or true as a string. So whenever you see the wrapper thing, it indicates that uh, you can call it under wrapper and uh, to, uh, to see how it's actually printed. So let's do, uh, for example, uh, let's see that k uh, equaled false and you can call this wrapper and it will return the false string as a string. It's the same thing like pr uh, pretty k. That means that if we can change the false, uh, it should change uh, when you print this uh, the boolean object. Now let's just make it knob. <laughs> and uh, the true, the yes. So let's check. Uh, recompiling. And let's now do a click clearing the screen. Okay, k false, k wrapper. Yeah, it works. And even print k and m true, print m and m wrapper. Wrapper call is yes great amazing so we do uh, we do some small change here and it, it, uh, as we see that's affected let's just revert back our change because i don't want the mess up things and recompile great let's just go to the next line so function to return a bool from c long so pi bool from long is actually returning a bool from a c long type as the boolean type is a subtype of the int then uh, the int uh, is a uh, created from the c long type then it's it's quite uh, actually understandable how it's, uh, how it's uh, implemented here then we see the bool new function and as we uh, can uh, can see that something new it, it means that we are creating some new object from it so we define bool new to always return either pi true or pi false uh, what's pi true and pi false so it's defined like let's see uh, yeah pi true and pi false uh, just returning the pi false struct and pi true returning the pi true struct which we'll explore below uh, but for now, let's just uh, create a new bool object by uh, using this bool new uh, thing. And we can do it like, uh, so there is a bool call. So if you just type k bool, uh, this is nothing here. Yeah, you just assign the type. But if you call the type call, then it's false. So why it's not true by, um, by default but false, but uh, it's indicated in help. So bool uh, returns true when the argument uh, x uh, is true, false otherwise. The built-ins true and false are the only two instances of the class bool. The class bool is a subclass of the class int and cannot be subclassed. Mm. That's the interesting thing. So, as uh, if you recall that uh, the non type also uh, cannot be subclassed, this is another type that cannot be subclassed. Uh, but I assume that we should, we can actually, not should, but we can actually change to return this true because as human being we uh, we think at the very beginnings uh, that we are always true 
somehow we can change it and just maybe this changing this line can return true for us let's see by default uh, return uh, true by default and uh, recompiling making uh, making some object from this wall and voila right uh, so this is actually actual code uh, if we want to, by default to create a true but not false and let's just change it back save re oops recompile um <laughs> another uh, option that we can change here is that arithmetic operations redefine to return bool if both arguments are bool so bool and is like uh, if you know the true and true ret should return true false and false should return false and uh, False and true should return false also. So you should definitely know this uh, We can change the, uh, this behavior maybe uh, to return Making a bool and to act like bool or so the only change we need here is that we need to do this and be or and not and yeah but or let's just recompile it to see if it's uh, if it works and so we have false and we have true object and we are doing like uh, K and with N. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, our and uh, uh, comparison actually, it works like or. Yeah. We can do vice versa. So, make or uh, acting like and. So, what we can do here, like change this to this. Recompile. Again, a same thing true. Um, false. Oops. True. And K okay, false. And let's do like um, or with K. So true or false returns false. Yes. That's it. So we did like and so true and uh, actually we uh, we uh, our uh, the new version of the or is like uh, and because we have changed all the source code here. Amazing stuff. So let's just revert back our change. I don't want to mess up things here for now. And make What we have here for the boolean implementation, so uh, is a the documentation string which uh, we have already read from the help. Arithmetic methods only, uh, arithmetic methods for the boolean types, uh, we have only mb and mb xor and mb or and nothing, nothing more. So pi bool types, a type object for bool knows that this cannot be subclass, a subclass again. So the representation is a bool, bool ripper, tp ripper is bool ripper, uh, the supported number types as bool as number, uh, documentation here, uh, and the base class of the, uh, the bool type is a pylong type, which is also the <coughs> integer. Uh, tp new for creating new object is bool new, we have already uh, did the trick. So the objects represented represent bool values false and true so the actual bool values false and true are represented here uh, they uh, have defined the for uh, pi false struct and pi true struct which is just uh, created as markers and uh, named as pi false and pi true so the boolean type implementation is actually uh, quite simple as non-type 
also uh, I like this uh, the inline documentation it's quite neat and understandable you, you can just pick up and change it, what what you want and recompile and test it so for bool type it, it, I think it's enough and uh, it's worth uh, again uh, to mention that it's you cannot uh, subclass from this type also and this feature is similar to the non type as well uh, that's it for now and see you in the next video um, bye hello guys and welcome to our next video about python internals so far so good we have covered uh, the built-in types we have made a change to the source code, recompiled our Python and learn a lot. Uh, but in order to uh, go further uh, and to get uh, extra deep knowledge, we need to understand the compiler part of the Python language. Um, in other words, we need to understand how actually uh, the Python acts when we run our code file. Uh, to get the idea, uh, let's start with the very basics. So when you run, uh, oh sorry, we have this uh, dummy.py file, which is quite simple. So we have a list, we have a function. It's returning uh, the doubled values of uh, inside the list with list comprehension, and we just uh, call this function inside the print in order to get the printed list. So it should be one, four, and six at the end. So first part of the, uh, the so-called compiling our code is a lexical analysis. Uh, in other words, it's a tokenization. It's called a tokenization. So this uh, this is basically when Python reads a source code. Uh, it first converts it, uh, it to a stream of tokens. Uh, uh, in a, uh, the stream of tokens which is a word like units of the language so what I mean is just uh, when uh, you apply this module tokenize to our dummy pi uh, uh, it, it will tokenize all the, uh, the existing uh, code lines and whenever you uh, whenever something you typed here it, it's, it will be tokenized so it's a world like uh, like units of the language itself so our uh, files encoding is utf8 so we have name oper operator like equal here uh, then we see that uh, we are opening the uh, a list here and applying numbers and operator uh, like a comma here we have new line, new line, and we have name def. Uh, the unique, uh, the reserved uh, unit uh, tokens, unique tokens for the Python language is like indentation and dedentation. So when you create a function, uh, as you remember, that you have four space and one tab, it's called indent, indent and it's also a predefined token for, now for the Python language. That's it, so it's first tokenized, then uh, it's going to parser, uh, in order uh, the parser to create a so-called abstract syntax tree, or AST. It's actually, uh, uh, how to say, what will happen in, uh, in our program, so basically. Let's just use it. So open up uh, the interpreter, when, uh, then we are going to import AST, Let's just clean a bit here, yeah? import AST, and uh, we are going to open uh, our file. Um, RB, so as F, what happened? Oops, yeah. As F, and we are going to create the tree with uh, AST parse. Uh, this f read great and we have such ast pretty uh, module which you you need to install and uh, we are going to use it uh, to uh, print the t 
tree itself and show offset false so we have tokenized it then uh, we are going uh, to create uh, the abstract syntax tree from our code what what's it so there is a body uh, and it has uh, the target is a name uh, it's assign action and there is a k name which which is a list with value one two three there's another uh, action here like function definition which is uh, given that we have no arguments so we have no position uh, only arguments we have no uh, keyword arguments and uh, other things inside the function it's returning the list comprehension and uh, that's it uh, then uh, we have expression uh, which is a function call and the function call is a print so that's that's uh, mm, that's uh, basically the AST and uh, it, it shows what actually your uh, code are going to do uh, I've omitted some parts for simplicity and I'm going to directly uh, to compile um, our code to the bytecode here so in other uh, uh, so in order to run actually our code we need to compile it so we are going to assign uh, to the code variable the compiler so we are going to compile this tree with file name dummy py and with exec mode that's great so if we exec the code it's actually executed so what we uh, what we did so far so we have created the abstract syntax tree then we compile this tree to the code object and it's created the code object uh, and we exec executed this code object so as you see is inside uh, the code it's actually executed this function and printed for us so how to get uh, the extra info from our this uh, from our code object so there's a model import uh, this which is uh, uh, for this is this assembling so let's print some information for our um code actual compiled code object so this code info will give you some bunch of information here so we have module name and um, actually we have a code object and this uh, code object is the compiled uh, uh, compiled how say compiled version of the function so each function is has its own uh, code object here inside the function I'm picking like uh, less terminology and plain English to explain the things it's not important to exactly understand what's going on behind just feel the thing that uh, there's a code object there's is abstract syntax tree it's compiled to the code object and code object stores some kind of information inside it so we can get some extra information from our code object so it has um, the, the many things but uh, the important part uh, for us here is this co code this is actually uh, the um, I would say the byte code or op codes operational codes uh, which our interpreter take a step to run our code we will dig into the opcodes and uh, the evaluation loop in the next video, but I'm just going to run some code here in order to get the idea here for you, in order to, uh, to show you the idea here. So if we just run uh, in this code, co code, it will return uh, some numbers. So this is a numbers predefined numbers of, of the operation codes so this this code object will show uh, the exact step-by-step -step actions uh, our uh, 
interpreter is going to do in order to run and finish our code. So it starts from build list, maybe. Uh, yes, build list, which should be this 103 of this uh, operational code. And then it loads a constant uh, load const using the load const uh, uh, opcode, I'd say, and stores a name. Then it's going to use this code object and uh, assign this code object to the my func name. Uh, it, it will store this, this name in the stack. Another thing is the printing the my func itself. But uh, as, as, as we have mentioned, that the code op uh, the function itself has a code object inside, and that's why this <coughs> uh, it's disassembled the code, the function body itself also. So what we have here is inside the body of the function, we uh, use the list comprehension, and that's why it's uh, it shows that we have used it. Then uh, we use uh, the list itself here k. And that's why it, it's shown here also. So we are loading the global variable. Uh, as you see, this is a global variable uh, for this uh, my function. Uh, if we declare some variable inside the func uh, my, uh, my func or inside the function, it's a local variable. So this is a global scope, and uh, this variable is loading from the uh, global scope. We will dig into each uh, the, uh, op opcodes uh, for sure, but for now, just it, uh, I'm giving the basic idea what's going on behind the scene. The next thing is that uh, when we disassemble this list comprehension action itself, it's going to build list and it's going to uh, create a for iterator. Uh, it's going to store this i in the stack, uh, then load it and binary multiply. Uh, we have multiplying here, as you see. So it's going to binary multiply, then the, it, it's going to uh, append this binary multiplied value to the new uh, builded list. And it's going at the end, return the, the value. So this is, a, this is actually what's going on the behind the scene when you run each time uh, your Python code. So if it's hard, uh, don't just uh, afraid about this. Uh, we will dig into it. So it's just uh, intro, intro what's going on behind the scenes. So the next video we are going to further improve our knowledge about the operational cause evaluation loop, how it's stored and written in the uh, C Python, uh, the source code, and what actually we can learn by uh, uh, by exploring this, uh, disassembling our code and how it can improve our code speed or the code quality. Mm, that's it for now, so uh, see you in the next video. Hello guys and welcome to our next video about the Python internals. In the previous video, uh, we have talked about the bytecode, opcodes, uh, compiling to the code object, and uh, it was actually the intro to our next topics. Uh, it, uh, this video is also the small intro in order to give you a taste of how actually the code object uh, used uh, while, uh, while you run your function or in the runtime. So, we have these two functions, they are pretty simple. So the adder function returning by summing up x and y, subtractor is just subtracting x and y. And if you get the type of the adder, uh, for your surprise, like it's also uh, the object. So we have a function object. And yes, in the source code, uh, we have a func object which is a function object implementation. And also we have a code object, which is a code object uh, implementation. So uh, we will dig into uh, maybe in the further videos, next videos. But for now, let's just 
do some uh, do some trick in order to understand how actually uh, uh, we can use this code object here. So if you dir uh, the adder, so this is a implemented features of the function object or function type itself, and it has this uh, magic mm, field uh, the thunder code. So for adder, uh, if we pass, it's going to add, and for subtractor, it's going to subtract. So how about uh, interchange these compiled code objects? So if we make the adders code, uh, let's just call this a code object. So as you see, this is a code object. And let's make it equal to subtractor, subtractor's code object. And let's call adder. So uh, it's quite amazing. So what we do here, so we have changed the adders compiled code object to the subtractor compiled code object. And this names like adder and subtractor in Python is just named. So this is not a hard rule that you should definitely uh, compiled it and it's adder so it will always add uh, the things here but as you see that we can change its behavior so maybe you can use this to um, to give some panic attack <laughs> to your fellow co-workers but still uh, it's quite interesting and uh, what, what else I want to say here yeah and uh, it's clearly this situation is clearly states that uh, the code object getting called at the runtime and uh, it's actually attaching to the frame when you call the function itself. This is an interesting feature and it's just uh, for your taste. Uh, you can just play around and figure out an extra uh, the features of your function object and the code object but for this video it's, uh, it's enough. So I'll see you in the next video uh, where I assume we are going to further uh, explore the bytecodes and how actually they are helpful to understand. Thanks. See you in the next video. Hello guys and welcome to our next video about uh, the Python internals. Uh, today we are continuing our talk about the importance of understanding the byte code, uh, the opcode, uh, and how actually we can extract the valuable information and uh, get the deeper understanding what uh, our code uh, is actually doing here. So we have a simple questions and a simple code here. So uh, we are going to uh, run with for loop through the integer and um, the, we're going to print i and uh, as you expect it will give uh, the type error uh, that int object is not iterable this is the same thing uh, if you uh, call the iter method on the k so this is the same thing because the for loop uh, uh, requires as an iterable object. So, uh, but the question is uh, why? Why int object is not iterable? Or how it's uh, actually implemented uh, in the C Python? To understand this, we are going to disassemble uh, the our code and uh, try to follow the instruction set of the bytecodes and or, or the opcodes and uh, try to find how it's implemented. For this, we are going to run uh, our dummy.py file. And the interesting part for us is this uh, get iter opcode and the for iter. So we can find uh, uh, these opcodes uh, and uh, the evaluation loop. Also, the evaluation of the code and the evaluation of the frame in ceval.c file, which is stored in the Python 
uh, folder uh, in the uh, CPython source code. So uh, there's a huge switch case. So as you see, the case, case, case. So, and each target is just simply uh, the sequence of actions that required uh, to run in order to finish and uh, finish your code and uh, give you a, a result, if it's possible to say like that. So interesting thing for us is that get iter target. So we required here that it is going to run the get iter. And inside get iter, we are going you know, to explore some a few things. So it's getting the, uh, the iterable object from the stack top. Uh, then it's going to uh, check uh, the get the uh, iterable um, iterable object uh, using the pi object get iter uh, function. Let's dig into this. This is in abstract C, uh, the file and excuse me. And here it's uh, that there's some kind of interesting thing. So if you notice that this is exact uh, uh, exact error, so object is not iterable. So how it's checked? Uh, first of all, it's checked uh, from the TP iter, the type uh, type and TP iter field, and it checks that if it's null, uh, then it's going to return the type error. So type error, this thing. So this type error implemented uh, in C Python like type error and uh, the error itself. So you can easily change it, for example, write uh, blah blah just uh, to see uh, the effect and recompile your code. Um, then run, oops, no, not, not with this. <laughs> so in object is not blah blah blah. So this is exact uh, the same error. So just revert this change, recompile. <laughs> so now in, in understanding this thing that uh, if some object has TP iter and if it's not null, then it indicates that this object is iterable. So for us, uh, uh, we have explored the pylon type uh, in, uh, the, in the integer type video and it has actually is a TP iter, but it's not implemented here. So if you uh, if you get the, uh, to the pylong type and look at the TP iter section, uh, this is a zero, and uh, it, it means that it's not implemented on null. So that's why this uh, this check is fail here in abstract C and in abstract C and uh, it's, it's actually the equal to the null and then it's going to return the object is not iterable uh, the, uh, fail so error. Uh, in contrast uh, with iterable objects we can easily check let's just enable our GDB um, so break main and run then call I initialize and if you just mm, look at the pi list type type uh, tp iter it's actually implemented so it's returning the list iterator object how about how about uh, the tuple so if you get that uh, pi tuple type tp iter it's returning the tuple iterator object the same thing for uh, as in for set, so for pi set type tp iter and it's returning the set iterator. So each uh, the complex object uh, in uh, in the Python has implemented its own uh, iter iterator implementation, I'd say, and it's returning uh, through this tp iter. Mm, and in, uh, if we check the pi long type mm, tp iter. So it's returning the null uh, memory address, zero memory address, and in C we know that this zero memory address is actually the same thing with the null. 
So that's actually how it's uh, checked uh, when we are going to uh, return or create the iterator object from our, uh, uh, from our object. Uh, this is a simple question, but it's quite informative to dig into these opcodes and look at how it's actually uh, checked behind the scene. Uh, there is also a for eater, which I'm just uh, just want to show a little. So let's just search it. Mm -hmm. uh, And this is it's creating like a, a for loop with uh, the using this for iter uh, the opcode and uh, the interesting thing is that with get iter uh, there's a prediction for uh, you know there's a comment about the predict so when the predict macros are enabled some opcode pairs follow in the direct succession without updating f f last instruction so. This is actually from the frame object. Uh, we are going to dig into uh, this one maybe in mm, several uh, future videos. But uh, for instance, get iter followed by the for iter is effectively a single opcode. So whenever it sees the get iter, as the documentation states, it predicts that the next step is a for uh, iter uh, opcode. So for and basically this is true because we are using the iterables or iteration uh, the most of the time with the uh, uh, for loop or uh, for iterator. Um, that's it for now. Uh, see you uh, in the next video. Um, I, I think that uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the global and uh, local variable storage and uh, its effect of to the, uh, the performance uh, of the Python code. Okay, see you in the next video.